back to where we said thank you. I think all of us out here today owe him a big thank you. And uh, you know, horn blowing is fine, but he wants the fruit of our lips. Let's go back to thank you. Would y'all take it back? Let's just sing that part again. Let's come on in your car, sing it to him. Thank you. We owe him a thank you today. so much for being so good and for caring about each one of us. You are such a good and loving Heavenly Father and we bless you today. Now Father as you've done in time past we ask you to speak by your spirit. Heal my body as an instrument for you to talk through. Speak through. I pray now, God, you give each one of us the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation that we will not only hear, but we would understand, comprehend what the spirit is saying unto the church. Your man said, with all you're getting, get understanding. We need understanding today so we can be doers of your word because we know the doer of the word is blessed. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. All that agree, would you say amen? amen. Somebody shout glory to God three times. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. That's where our scripture is today. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Turn there with me if you would. Romans chapter 8. 35. You ready for the word today? Romans 8, 35. I want you to repeat with me before I give the scripture for today, before I read the scripture. I want you to repeat our subject. Would you repeat after me? Say, I am not a victim. I am 
victory. Say it again. I am not a victim. I am victory. One more time with zest, zeal, and enthusiasm. Say it with me. I am not a victim. I am victory. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, the word nay means no. Nay, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I am not a victim, I am victory. In these last days, my brothers and my sisters, we're going to find ourselves, as the scripture says, in very perilous or dangerous times. And in these times, we need to understand that even though we are Christians, even though we are saved, even though we are sons of the Most High God, from time to time, we're going to face some very difficult situations. Paul in verse 35 lists some of the possible things that Christians can possibly face. And again, these things are multiplied in these last days. The list is in the B clause of verse 35. He said, it's possible that we will face tribulation. That means troubles, difficulties, Distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. These are some of the possible, even probable things that we may possibly have to endure in these last days as Christians. We may have to endure some of these things. But in the midst of this difficult and trying time, we must never, 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 never take the mindset of a victim. Never take the mentality or the mindset of a victim. Because of my brothers and sisters, the Bible has taught us that there's a person thinks in his heart, so are they. If you think like a victim, you will act like a victim, you will talk like a victim, you will walk like a victim. And one thing we want to understand today is that victims invite attack. Victims invite attacks because victims or people who are operating a victim mentality are actually despite their bravado and their boast and their bark people with a victim mentality are really weak people they're really weak and we learn from the scriptures how the devil tries to operate or how he does operate because the devil's got to find weak people. He's got to find people with a victim mentality. And the scripture teaches us this in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Tells us about the enemy, our adversary. It says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may, devour. So from that text we know number one the devil has to seek who he may devour and we understand number two that the devil operates like a lion in the jungle. He goes about as 
a roaring lion. Now, I remember just enough from Sunday afternoons as a child, as a teenager, looking at Wild Kingdom, that the devil in the jungle or the lion in the jungle, and we live in a place like a jungle now, the lion in the jungle had to look for prey like a gazelle that was young. The lion had to look for prey that was weak. The lion had to look for prey that was separated somehow from the flock. And those that showed weakness or vulnerability in front of the lion were those that would come under attack. I'm going to tell you today, the people who come under attack most are usually people who display victim characteristics. That's why the Bible says the devil as a roaring lion has to look for people who put themselves in a victim posture, who act like a victim, look like a victim, talk like a victim, operate out of a victim mentality. The devil has to look for those kind of people because those are the people that he can devour. And again, that's why the Bible tells us that we need to be strong in the Lord. I tell you, if people would get as excited about getting strong in the Lord as they are in their bodies, if people today would work out their spirit man like they work out the muscles in their body, if they would build their faith like they try to build their muscles, there'd be some mighty strong people today. But really, most people today in front of the devil act out of a victim mentality. Now, a victim mentality is brought on by a person's emotions. I'm going to tell you, emotions are good, but they're only good when we allow God to emote through us. We need to feel what God feels and, and emote or have emotions like God has emotions. Most people who have a victim mentality is brought on by a person's emotions and illusions and these emotions and illusions are brought on by past negative experiences past negative experiences to put it plain people who have a victim mentality are actually wounded there are a lot of wounded people around today let's bring it on home out here today. There are a lot of wounded people in this parking lot. A lot of people who are acting and reacting out of an emotional response that was birthed by some negative experience that could have happened a long, long time ago. And so they come forth wounded because they are wounded emotionally and they really need to go to God and get healed so then God can use them to heal others rather than wound others. I'm going to tell you something, <laughs> and don't forget this, wounded people wound people. You've heard the statement before, hurting people hurt people. Well, wounded people will go around wounding other people. And the mentality, even though they may not say it with their mouth, the mentality is everyone and everything is against me. Everything and everyone is against me. They feel like they have been picked out to be picked on. Are you in this parking lot today? But I came to tell you today that no child of God, no matter what their situation, no child of God is supposed to be a victim I want you to say this with me. Say, I, I'm never a victim. I'm never a victim. And say with me, say, after the day, I'm going to get rid of a victim mentality. Every child of God, hear this, no matter what the situation, I don't care if you're in tribulation. I don't care if you're distressed. I don't care if you're being persecuted. And persecution is going to be a part of this last day. 
experience for the church. I don't care if you're in famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. I don't care if you're in a war. You are still not a victim. And I want to tell you today why you are not a victim. You're not a victim because you have the victory. That's more than just a, a Christian cliche. That is the truth. You have the victory. Now, right now there ought to be a question in your mind that says, why do I have the victory? Why do I actually have the victory? That's a valid question. And the answer is right in the text. We have the victory because the love of God is keeping us. We have the victory because we are in the love of God. Look at verse 35. The A clause, verse 35 says, Who shall separate us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I want you to answer that question in your car. Say, nobody can separate me from his love. Nobody, come on, answer it. Say, nobody can separate me. Come on, say it. Nobody can separate me from the love of Christ. A better way to read this text would be to say, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? I want to answer your question today and let you know there is nothing on earth more powerful than the love of Christ. There is nothing on earth, there is nothing in the universe more powerful than the love of Christ. What Christ did for us was motivated by love. God so loved the world. Why? What did he do? That he gave his only begotten son. That's a, that's a whole lot of love. That's really love to die for messed up people. And all of us were messed up when he found us. Say glory to God somebody. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. There's nothing more powerful than the love of Christ. Nothing more powerful than love. There is nothing more powerful than L-O-V-E. There's nothing more powerful. The Apostle Paul had the Holy Ghost audacity to say in his Corinthian letters that love never fails. Love never fails. Say it me, say love never fails. Love never fails. There's nothing in the universe more powerful than love. Why? Because God is love. Oh, glory to God. God is love. Are you hearing me? God is love. That's who he is. That's the very essence of his being. Love is not something he does. Love is who he is. Love is God and God is love. And there is nothing in the universe more powerful than love. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 1, don't turn there. It says in Ephesians 6 and 1 that I have been accepted in the beloved. It says to me, I've been accepted in the beloved. My wife came up to me the other day by the Holy Ghost, began to speak to me. She said, I just was studying Ephesians 1 where it says we've been accepted in the beloved. And she said, I studied it and I found out it meant that there is never a time or a place or a predicament where we are not loved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's never a time, a place, or a predicament when you are not loved. You are always loved because you have been accepted in the beloved. And I want to make it plain. I want to make it plain. I want it to come together because you need to understand that because you're in love, the scripture says nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Say it with me. Say nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Love is what saved you. I said love is what saved you. In your car, help me recite the, the, the old hymn. You know it. I was sinking deep in sin. Come on, say it with me. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. 
Say it with me. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me now safe am i now what does the chorus say it was love i said it was love that lifted me when nothing else could help what was it love. it was love that lifted me the bible says in first john 4 and 9 and this was manifested the love of god taught us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. John says by the Holy Ghost, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. And the Bible says that God loves us with an everlasting love. I said he loves us with an everlasting love. So there's a question in the text. The question in the text in verse 35 is who shall separate us? That's a question. That's why it's a question mark after Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? And then, that's one wonderful thing about the Bible. If you keep reading, it'll answer itself because the answer is in verse 37. It says, nay. Nay, and I like the next word, in. In. Can I help you today and let you know that sometimes you will find yourself in some things? Yeah. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened unto you. I want you to know something, and that is that afflictions and persecutions are part of life's fabric, but I want you to know that we serve a God a God of love. Many are the afflictions. Not of the sinners down on the street drinking wine. Not of the crackhead uh, smoking crack. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Well, what's the advantage of being saved then? Because he delivers the righteous out of them all. I need a witness here. I need to witness who here has been in some affliction, some trouble, some difficulties. I know it's everybody, but some of y'all want people to think you brought yourself out. But it wasn't nobody but the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them, not out of some of them, but out of them all. The Lord will deliver you if you get caught up in an affliction. And again, that's why the Bible says you got to come to the point where you have enough faith in God that when you fall into a diver's temptation, you go ahead on and count it all joy. Why can I count it joy? Because I know I'm in the beloved. I know God loves me. I know I'm surrounded by an everlasting love. It's the same love that saved me when I was at my worst. And if he saved me when I was at my worst, now that I'm saved, surely he will deliver his child. I need somebody to shout glory to God. Surely. That's why the Bible says in this same chapter, how shall he not, I hope y'all read your homework, with him also freely. If God didn't spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All you got to do is employ patience. All you got to do is stick with the word. Keep working the word and letting the word work you. And the word will work you right out of your situation. I need a glory to God right there. The Bible says, nay, in verse 37, in, in all these things, we are more. <laughs> Who is we? Me and Christ. We are more than conquerors. Not just conquerors. It's not going to be close. It's not going to be a tie. It might look like we are sheep for the slaughter. And you know, that's just a setup. Sometimes stuff on the outside looks like you're just a poor lamb getting ready to get slaughtered. whole lot of folk in the world are looking at you saying, my goodness, look what they're going through. I want you to know it's just a setup. It's a setup for the glory of God. 
And you've got to have enough confidence in the love of God to stand flat-footed. Tell the devil and anybody who's speaking for the devil that God will get glory out of this. Are you hearing me? In all these things, we are more... Come on, slap yourself on the chest. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. If somebody's in the car with you, point at them, say, I'm more than a conqueror. If somebody's in the car next to you, say, I'm more than a conqueror. It ain't even close. It might look close. That's just a setup. It might look like I'm on under. That's just a setup. To give God more glory. You are not a victim because no matter what you find yourself in, you are more than a conqueror through him. Speak with me. Come on, talk with me. Say, I am not a victim. I'm not a victim. Speak with me. Say, because no matter what I find myself in, no matter what I find myself in, I am more than a conqueror, and I'm more than a conqueror through him. More than a conqueror. And somebody said, why do you think you're more than a conqueror? Because he loved us. I know he loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. How you know? Because the Bible, the Bible tells me so. Anybody here read the Bible? The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me when I was yet a sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. That's me. I know he loves me. I know he loves me because of what happened on the cross. I believe in the cross. What happened before the cross, in the cross, after the cross. Everything he did at the cross he had because he had me in mind. I know he loves me. And you know some of y'all had the nerve. <laughs> some of y'all had the nerve to be cast down in your mind because some human being don't love you. Get over it. I'm going to give you a marvelous revelation. And don't you ever forget it. Everybody ain't going to like you. That's part of the journey. So don't go around trying to manipulate your life for people who are trying to manipulate you. I'm preaching, Ben. Somebody's responding. I want to give you an email from heaven. Everybody ain't going to like you. If you're a child of God, you need to know some folk going to hate you without a cause. So get over it. If somebody's around you, look at them and say, get over it. Get over it. Learn how to be secure in the love of Christ. Learn how to be secure knowing that you have a heavenly father that loves you even in spite of you. You have a heavenly father that loves you even on your worst days. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have some days that's not so good. I won't make it plain. I have some days I don't act exactly right. I don't say everything exactly right. I sometimes I wake up, I don't feel saved. But guess what? The Lord still loves me on those days in spite of myself. So why are you going to get upset and tripping? Because somebody don't like you. <laughs> I wish you'd tell somebody, get over it. Please get over it. God loves me. So you need to renew your mind. Because you always win. People say, I don't know if I have the audacity to say that. You ought to, you ought to stand up in the middle of a mess and say, I always win. I, mean, I, will. I don't know if I say that or not. I don't know if I say that. The devil might. I want the devil to hear. Come on, say it with me. Don't be scared. Say, I always win. I always win. How can you have the audacity to say that, Pastor Lawson? I keep telling you that you are your greatest testimony. I'm going to take you there again, and I'm going to take you there as long as it takes for you to get it. Out of all you've been through, yes. out of all the times you could have, should have, would have died, yes. oh, out of everything the enemy has tried, Everybody. I'm still here. Amen. Amen. That's why you ought to be able to declare, I shall live. And not die. What's the reason for living? So I can declare 
the works of the Lord. I am a living testimony of God working in my life because I should. Some folk have gone crazy through what I've been through. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about. But you always win because you are still here. Come on, say with me, say, I'm still here. I'm still here. And, and say with me, say, I'm going to stay here that God gets ready for me. No time to check out now, time to stay in. Because if I want to look up to the sky and see a pretty cloud like that, and see him coming on a horse. No time to check out now. The good stuff just getting ready to happen. You don't want to have to get to heaven and go check out a video to see it. You want to see it on earth. You want to look up and hear the shout, hear the trumpet blast. And you want to see yourself in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Take off and fly with our Delta. Fly with our United. Be caught up to meet him. Somebody shout glory to God. So you need to renew your mind, child of God. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. Because the devil will always have somebody stationed to try to upset your stuff. So you got to change your mind. And I'm going to tell you about change. See, some of us need to change. Some of us in this parking lot have not changed. We just come to church. If you've got the same old attitudes, the same old habits, the same old disposition, I'm going to tell you something. You have not changed. And guess what? Change is the only constant. In just a few days, you're going to see these leaves around us turn beautiful colors. Why? Because they're going to change. And God is always taking us through changes. If you're not changing, you're not growing. And some of y'all have the audacity to say things like, this is just me. This is the way I am. If you don't like me, let me tell you something. You ought to always be getting better. Every day, it ought to be a new and improved version of you that's hitting the street. Looking more and more like Jesus. Change your mind. Change is not change till you change. Take on, what, can I got, what I got to take in my mind? A victorious mindset. You got to get a victorious mindset because you're going to need it. There are going to be some, some things happening in the earth around us in the coming months. Don't let nobody fool you. November's going to be turbulent. The spirit of Antichrist has spit out venom and made it so people now are emboldened to shoot people and do crazy things. That's the spirit of Antichrist. See, and you're going to see some you're going to see some things. I don't care who wins or who loses. It ain't even about that. It's about the spirit of Antichrist. And it's about the last days. The script has already been written. Evil men and seducers are going to get worse and worse. I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom, but I'm going to tell you, we're not going to get back to normal. Not getting back. And I see people trying so hard. I sat down and looked at college football yesterday. All the people still trying to cram stadiums in spite of it. I see our poor, I see the majority of our poor black boys being used as pawns on the football field in the midst of a virus. You know why? Because of the love of money. It's all about the love of money. Don't let nobody fool you. The love of money is the root of all this evil. What they got to lose? A bunch of poor black boys from the ghetto out there beating each other brains out. And most of them will never get a college degree. Most of them will not go pro. They'll just be used for four years. Beating each other brains out. Ain't getting no help now because you love football. I like it too. But I say if you're going to go, you ought to at least get an education. can't go pro, you ought to at least get you a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get back on this word. Somebody going to say I'm meddling. But you're going to need you're gonna need a victorious mindset. In this last day, some things you're going to see, you're going to see some stuff. Before we up out of here, you're going to see some stuff like you've never seen before. Yeah, right 
and it's all the spirit of antichrist and evil men in the earth and things getting worse and worse and I want to help you right here there is not a candidate in the world that can fix it there ain't one and Jesus name not on the ballot but guess what he's coming back and someday the government gonna be on his shoulders preach Holy Ghost I ain't getting no help up here But the Bible has a but in it, and I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Here it is. Let me stay with the word. The Bible says, Nay, in all these things we are more than common. Look at verse 37. Let's close. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's all about love. Love is the thing that's keeping you. Love is the thing that's holding you. Love is the glue that keeps you from coming apart. It's all about love. And all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And here's where the mind renewal comes in. For verse 38 says, I am persuaded. You know what time it is now? It's time to get persuaded. I'm persuaded. What are you persuaded of, Paul? By the Holy Ghost that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things that are present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other thing created shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Repeat after me. He says, I'm not a victim. I'm victory. And there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you, you're going to make it. Talk to yourself, say, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. If nobody don't like me, I'm still going to make it. If I don't have a friend I can call on the telephone, I'm still going to make it. Because there is a friend. Ha! I said there is a friend. They stick it closer than a brother. There is one that when your father and your mother forsake you. Boy, I feel like preaching now. The Lord himself will take you up. What a friend we have in Jesus. I'm going to say this. I got a friend in Jesus. Yep. Two boys one day were walking home from school down this path every day every day some bullies would jump out you know the world's full of bullies bullies would jump out and beat him up then they send him on his way he'd go home and he was scared to tell his parents he kept going down that street every day after the beginning of school and the bullies would come out and beat him up again he'd go home beat up and then one day he got right at the place where they beat him every day. And he sat down. Didn't run. Bullets came along and said, Don't you know we're going to beat you again today? And the little boy started smiling. And they said, Have you lost your mind? Said, we're getting ready to beat you up again today. And the little boy sat there and then he, he started laughing. Then they really got angry. So they got together. Three or four guys got together, got around a little boy, and got ready to start punching him. He started laughing. And the head bullet said, what are you laughing at? He said, look, coming down the street. You see, you see that guy coming down the street? He says, that's my big brother. Some of y'all ain't going to get it to the midnight. He said, that's my big brother. He said, I'm going to tell you something. When he gets here, he's on the way up the street. Y'all in big trouble. I came to tell somebody today that feels like a victim. You got a big brother. You got an elder brother. 
His name is Jesus. And stuff might be trying to beat you up. Situations, circumstances might be trying to beat you up. But when you get home, go in your secret closet. Shut the door. Talk to your big brother. He's able. I said he's able. Jesus is able. He's able to keep you from falling. Present you faultless before the throne of God. With great joy. He'll, he'll keep you. He's a keeper. And how are we going to make it in this last days? Jesus. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus. He's going to see us through. Come on, say, Mr. Jesus is going to see me through. And I'm not a victim anymore. I'm not going around feeling like I'm picked on to be picked out. I'm not going around talking about who don't love me, who don't understand me. I got Jesus. And he'll take care of every situation. And I want to talk to you wounded folk. He'll even heal your wounds. I'm talking about stuff you've never talked to anybody about. Stuff from in the deepest recesses of your mind. He will heal your wounds. He heals the broken hearted. I said he heals the broken hearted. Binds up all their wounds. He's a good God. And you don't have to tell anybody. Just go in your secret closet and just ask her, heal me, Jesus. Heal me of my secret scars. He'll do it. You won't be a victim anymore. You won't walk like a victim, talk like a victim, or act like a victim. You'll put your head in, up high. I don't mean in pride. I mean you'll put your head up in knowing who you are in him. He'll build you up on the inside. Every head is bowed, every eyes closed. Every head is bowed, every eyes closed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for Jesus.